I'm uh, giving you a basic overview of how I started investing. Um, my dad worked a lot with us and had us do a lot of jobs when I was younger. Uh, we tilled gardens, cut firewood, uh, built birdhouses, doghouses, uh, did about every kind of yard work you can think of, in, including cleaning gutters. Uh, we sold fish and worms at one time. We rented canoes, tubes, funyaks, which are inflatable canoes. Uh, inner tubes are usually the inside of a a tractor trailer tire. I'm not sure if they make those anymore. And uh, let's see what else we did after that. That's pretty much between. I had a checking account at five, a savings account. No, a checking account at five, a savings account at six to start writing bills for, or checks for the bills, and uh, keeping up coupons and house basic household budgeting when I was seven. So uh, that's a good start. Um, I recommend trading in stocks. You might see one of my other videos about how to raise a billionaire. And the way I got started in stocks is uh, I saved up the first $500. I, I looked in a magazine. I called somebody uh, that sent me to a friend, sent me to uh, a Val Victorian, and she had me talk to her father. And her father said, Go see somebody at A.G. Edwards, which is still around. I went in, and uh, I the guy asked me, you know, how long I plan on keeping the money in there, and he said a very mi very minimum was a uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but he was a he used to be a mechanical engineer that got into uh, became a stockbroker. So he told me, look at these. I, mean, I want to say I was like 17 years old. He said, look at these. Uh, 13 mutual funds, pick one out, you know, invest in companies that you might know the name in. And I, he went to lunch, left me in his office, came back about an hour later. I had narrowed it down to two. Um, he, it was Washington Mutual, I think was the name of the fund that I actually picked. But he asked me why. I said, I know these three companies, I don't know these other ones. And uh, he told me that he had moved after he saw me. Um, all his money, which I think he said he had $53,000 in the account, which I was shocked that was a huge amount of money. Um, I thought at the time in the 80s, actually, I'm sorry, in the early, the mid 90s, I think it was 90, I want to say 91, um, or I think I got that right. Anyway, the date's irrelevant. Uh, and it just happened to be the first, the best six months in um, those two sectors. Uh, over the 30 years of investment in the stock market that they have been around. Five of them were um, military industrial complex weapon producers and the other 10, or the, I'm sorry, the other five were um, uh, Philip Morris had bought, I believe at the same time, uh, Kraft which make cigarettes and I think the other one were other ones were uh, in, somehow invested in in cigarette companies which I would never do now but I almost doubled my money even after paying the $53 fees there was a, a load fee, a front end fee, a back end fee a man, there's a management fee which all of them have that was kinda high I believe it was 2.15 percent at that time and a 1201B fee which I would not recommend if any of those fees are attached um, unless you're, gonna, you're doing something short term, like in, within six months, do not pay them. The 1201B is a is a marketing fee, which they take that money and try to. I, I think of it as a Ponzi scheme. They try to promote whatever the mutual fund is uh, to other people to get them to buy into it to drop the price up of those stocks just through marketing, um, just uh, putting in a magazine or a newspaper or on the internet now somewhere so people see it so they'll buy more into those companies especially if they're small and usually the, the fund manager and the board or the financial company is directly um, invested they manage the whole thing whatever those corporations are that they're investing in so uh, very weary I don't know of a good time or a good mutual fund way it's marketed to 12 uh, to buy to pay a 12 uh, b1 fee so that's something to look out for. I don't recommend loads. There's no reason to pay that. And if the management fee 
I think is over, I want to say 0.5% that's considered real high. If you look back to the dot-com uh, bust, which was uh, around the turn of the century, century uh, 2000, um, I don't know of any of the mutual funds that survived that actually had a load fee that were in the tech sector at that time because you're, you're probably paying a 1201B fee, you're paying a load fee, which means that's part of the money that's not put to work that you're um, spending to buy into the fund when you to put your money to work in the fund. And then a back end fee, if you sell, they take another chunk. You pay a management fee, that's paid every annually. Uh, I think if you if you sell out the fund before the end of the year, once you buy in, even if it's, if you hold it for more than 30 days, then you still pay that fee. Um, mutual funds are something you want to be in long term, which is five to ten years. Uh, and I also recommend looking at cyclicals. If you're going to invest in cyclicals, uh, I know a lot of people that's made a lot of money in that. A cyclical is uh, actually I'll save that for another video.